Hello Wastelanders! The Amazon Fallout TV series Season 1 has debuted this month, and whether you are a fan or not, there are some things we all have to come to grips with. Namely, what is introduced in the series, set in 2096 after the events of the games, is considered by Bethesda to be canon. To quote a Vanity Fair interview with director Jonathan Nolan and show producer slash head of Bethesda, Todd Howard, Fans of the game should know that everything in the series is officially part of Fallout lore, and Bethesda was careful to make sure the scripts could coexist with previous storylines from the gaming titles. Quote, We view what's happening in the show as canon, says Howard. That's what's great, when someone else looks at your work and then translates it in some fashion. He admits to being envious of some of the TV show's interpretations and additions. Quote, I sort of looked at it like, ah, why didn't we do that? While the TV show does make some additions and alterations to the Fallout world, particularly the fate of the NCR, the future of the Enclave, the origins of vault Tech, and the Great War, etc., today we need to talk about what was introduced as canon to ghoul lore, because the rules have changed. Some minor spoilers are unavoidable going forward, so you've been warned. Before we get into the big stuff, let's address a slightly new aesthetic choice for the ghouls of the TV series, and no, I'm not talking about how Walter Goggins' character has kind of a smooth face for a ghoul. Fallout ghouls have long resembled zombies, but the scene where the audience first meets Goggins' character, the ghoul, indicates a new iconic horror alignment. The ghoul is introduced to the audience in a way that signals both a redefinition of Fallout ghouls and a return to the traditional origins of the ghoul name. In the scene... Three mercenaries, seeking the ghoul's aid, speak of him in hushed tones as a nearly mythical figure with legendary capabilities. To talk with him, they must first dig him up because he is imprisoned in a graveyard by his enemies, buried alive in a coffin meant to contain him for an unspecified number of years. Between these details and the gothic film elements of this scene, the audience might be forgiven for assuming they were about to meet a vampire. Indeed, the word ghoul originated in the pre-Islamic religions of the Middle East and referred to malevolent supernatural creatures dwelling in cemeteries, eating corpses, and occasionally drinking blood. In those ways, ghouls resemble the later Transylvanian vampire that has become such a popular icon today. Additionally, according to some versions of the mythology, ghouls were also believed to begin life looking like normal humans and become more zombie-like and monstrous over time, like the familiar ghouls of the Fallout games. Does this cemetery scene and its initial characterization of Goggins' character, the ghoul, signal a subtle vampiric shift in Bethesda ghoul lore? The TV series scene where several feral ghouls are released by Lucy in the Super Duper Mart and attack with ferocious speed and terrible strength is not out of keeping with the ghoul attacks we know from the games. Don't be scared. You're free. But these ghouls in this scene bite at their victims' necks, reinforcing a slight vampiric connection. Let me know what you think in the comments. On to more significant matters, and more significant spoilers. The character of the ghoul is so singularly named because he is the oldest non-feral ghoul survivor known not only to the series, but potentially the entire Fallout franchise. And he seems to owe his success to an as-of-yet unnamed drug that he takes habitually. Over 200 years of imbibing this previously unheard of chem appear to have both protracted his sanity and created an intense physical dependency, as demonstrated in several scenes of the show. Perhaps his constant application of this substance explains why he looks less ghoulish than other ghoul characters we see in the series. Speaking of which, another ghoul named Roger is encountered in the series and discusses the nature of the chem. Roger, who has run out of the ghoul chem and is turning feral, says that a little puff hey. will set him right. Yeah, you don't have to have any vials, do you? <laughs> Just one little puff and I'll be back on my feet. You know I'm good for it. Confirming that he shares the ghoul's belief in the feral preventative effects of the mysterious vials. Are Fallout ghouls now like the vampire protagonist Blade, depending on a difficult-to-procure serum to stave off murderous compulsions? You don't get these. You turn into one of those? That how it works?
Within the Fallout games, non-feral ghouls like Eddie Winter and the vault Tech rep appear to be nearly as old as Goggin's character, the ghoul, but no evidence of a chemical dependency is presented to explain their longevity. This raises the question of whether the ghoul and other ghouls we meet in the series like Roger are mistaken about the nature of their condition and their need for the mystery chem. Maybe the chem, though habit-forming, is a delusional red herring and doesn't actually prevent them from turning feral. After all, Roger claims to have only made it 28 years as a ghoul before turning, despite using the chem. 28 years since I first started showing. <laughs> while the ghoul has gone eight times that long with the same substance. No. Not as long as you, though. <laughs> You've outlasted us all. How long since you first started wastelanding? A long time. If you have another way of interpreting this new, apparently canon information that preserves consistency between the games and the series, please let me know in the comments. Another bombshell new aspect of ghouls introduced by the Amazon TV series is their apparent ability to wolverine heal and regenerate. Unavoidable spoilers ahead. When Maximus Esquire Thaddeus needs to heal his mangled foot, he is given a treatment by a questionable doctor and his foot immediately knits itself back together in a miraculous fashion. Warn you, the taste, not great. Just give it. Okay. <sighs> What's the result? Yes, the results. The doctor says he doesn't have to worry about radiation now and leaves. Later, when Thaddeus is struck in the neck with a crossbow bolt, the wound, which should be mortal, Why am I not dead? heals over in seconds and Maximus suggests that Thaddeus must be a ghoul now. That is... I, I think you might be a ghoul. This reinforces the phenomenon as a known ghoul trait within the TV series, and since the series is canon, the Fallout world. It does appear to have its limits though, since the ghoul loses his trigger finger in a scene and it doesn't regrow. Instead, he sews a different finger on in its place, I won't spoil where he got it, and seems instantly none the worse for wear. Just like that. While the ghouls in the games are remarkably resilient to the effects of the environment, nutritional neglect, and radiation damage, I don't recall anything in the games to indicate ghouls have a super healing ability. Will this new ability change future installments of the video game franchise? I'm not saying that game lore and gameplay can't accommodate it, but now that it is canon, Shouldn't it have to? Our last item of business in this discussion of new ghoul rules is the especially Walking Dead-esque ghoul present in the last scenes of season one. I'll try to keep the spoilers to a minimum, but this is the last episode of the TV show season we're talking about. This ghoul, partially immolated in the same bomb blast that ghoulified it, seems burnt far beyond the limits of a living being. This is different than the leprosy-like effects visible in other ghouls. This presents as a true zombie state of undeath. The games have always narrowly skirted the problem of ghouls as undead or supernatural beings. There are no zombies present in Fallout lore. Thank you! This ghoul's canon presence would appear to signal a change because if this isn't a zombie undeath scenario, then we are being asked to believe that living flesh is present with a living beating heart that on some level, biochemical organic systems are still functioning to keep this creature alive. And you don't have to be Rick Grimes to see that is a difficult assessment to agree with. For the record, I am a fan of the Amazon Fallout series, and in many ways, none of these questions it raises have to change how I play the games. But if you are like me, you cherish the retro-futuristic world that Fallout exists in, and you want Bethesda to strive for internal consistency so that world stays intact. Going forward, will Bethesda be giving us games with vaguely vampiric, secret serum-dependent, super-healing, but sometimes undead ghouls? Or will they ignore all those implications raised in the Amazon TV series because Bethesda couldn't be bothered to have a care when throwing around the word canon? And which is worse? The future of our beloved Fallout world may look very differently depending on the answer. Let me know your thoughts below, support this conversation by liking the video, and if you want to support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already and consider becoming a channel member to help me make more vids for you and our Fallout community. For now, later Raiders, I'll see you in the next one.